Hi, this is James Tanner, and welcome to another quick view of genealogy. Hi, welcome to another quick view of genealogy. Today, we're going to be using Google to find our ancestors. A couple of things that we need to know about Google searches, and we'll also find out uh, how they work and uh, what we can find when we search for our ancestors. First of all, I'm going to use an example of a search for uh, someone who I've searched for frequently, frequently and know the results. That's my great-grandfather. His name was Henry Martin Tanner. And I search for Henry Martin Tanner on the, uh, on the computer. And I might suggest that it's a good idea to uh, do this kind of search for each of your ancestors, either the surname or the name of the ancestor. In this case, when I search for Henry Martin Tanner, I end up with over a million results, which is uh, pretty difficult to deal with. I'm certainly not going to go through over 1.7 million different results to see if I can find my grandfather information about my great-grandfather. The first thing you can do to cut that number down is to put the name in quotation marks. By putting the quotation marks before and after the name, you're telling Google that you want to look for a uh, the term Henry Martin Tanner exactly, uh, that that those words in that order. Otherwise, what it's going to look for is Henry, Martin, and Tanner individually, Henry Martin, Henry Tanner, Martin Tanner, um, and so forth, every uh, combination of the letters. And, uh, and the, in the, I mean, many, any combination of the words in, in, those, uh, in that name. I, immediately when I look, do that, the number of entries drops to about 18,000. Well, that's still way more than I can possibly uh, look at. But in addition to that, I could put in some limiting words that would appear in the same website. So if I put in Arizona, for example, it drops it down to about 7,750. I could do more to make more specific, but this way I am getting, as you, as you, if you look carefully at the screen, you'll see that I have Henry Martin Tanner uh, in through all the first pages. Now, it's my experience that with this ancestor, there probably are as many as 7,000 entries on the internet about this individual. Uh, he had 17 children and has thousands of, of descendants. Um, in addition, we could put other words up here. For example, if we're looking for uh, a specific thing, we could look for genealogy at the same time. Now, rather than drop, the number increased dramatically. And why that happened was that we added a word uh, that will be searched. So it will search for Henry Martin Tanner, but it will also search for every instance of Arizona and the word genealogy. Uh, and so there could be just, there could be, as there are here, millions of places. But the first few entries are going to be very specifically aimed at finding uh, the websites where all three of these were these search terms now, the one in quotes and the two other words, are contained on the same website. So I suggest uh, different combinations of words that might bring out uh, the location. It's also possible to put in a year. So, for example, if I put in the year 1890 and do the search again, the number drops considerably. But we also get a lot of very other very interesting references to uh, the to my great grandfather. Now, what else can we do with a search like this? Well, I suggest that we might also be able to find patterns in searching with Google. In this case, if we're searching for an ancestor, we can put in the pattern of the names of his family members. So I'm going to use my great-grandfather again as, as a possibility, and I'll put in his name, his, his wife's name, Eliza, one of his children's names, Roland Tanner, 
and another child, Leroy Tanner. And then I'll put in the, the uh, surname, but I'll do that in just a second. Let's go ahead and look for any combination of uh, the appearance of Henry, Eliza, Rowan, and Leroy in the same, on the same website, the same area. Okay, and what we get here is uh, going down just a little bit. We're not finding particularly anybody that um, that fits that that category, and so basically, what would be a good idea would be to put in the surname, and now we have exact references to that family. So by adding certain uh, modifying words, such as the surname. I could also do the same thing. I'll take out Tanner and add in Arizona and see what kind of results we get. Now the numbers of results that we get here in the, uh, in the search is not as significant as what we get on the first page. I usually don't go beyond the first page unless I'm doing uh, some other kind of extensive research and want to get a lot of different sources. So there really, <clears throat> in this case, Finding those four terms together that the word Arizona is not productive. So we have a couple of different options. One is to put in all the names of the family members plus the surname or try other modifiers that might help to, uh, to locate the family. Now this doesn't limit it just to looking for the specific name. Uh, let's say, for example, I wanted to put in the name of my great-grandfather and the word cemetery. In that case, I come up with the first entry here, which is findagrave from findagrave.com, and says that it says that he's buried in the Joseph City Cemetery in Joseph City, Arizona, and this is correct. So we might want to do searches for our ancestors based on uh, different words that we may be associating for, uh, for their, uh, during their research. For example, I could substitute the word death for um, the cemetery word and come up with the day that he died. Now granted, I do know that this information is already in the computer because I've already uh, done these searches previously. Also because a lot of this information is information that I entered myself into the, into the program. However, the, if you look closely at the, um, uh, at the references, which uh, probably you can't do, let me see if I can zoom in here just a little, make this a little bit bigger. You can see from, uh, from the larger zoom that these all talk about the same individual, but if you look at the, the addresses of the locations where the information came from, you'll see that there's a lot of different uh, places where the information has been gathered. Here's one from uh, the Thope Library in Utah. Here's WorldCat, uh, Google Books, Abe Books, all sorts of books all sorts of different locations on the internet. So assuming that there is no information about an ancestor is, is probably not a good tactic to take in searching for information on Google. Now, what if I want to find a specific book or a specific piece of information about my family? Well, I can use as many words as I want, but let me give kind of an illustration here. We're going to go look for uh, Henry Martin Tanner. In this case, we're going to to search, uh, do another search here. And under the search tools that we have over here on the side or more, we can, we can specify that uh, we would like to look in the in books. So right now I'm, I'm asking Google, searching in books, and I'm asking Google to find if there's a book about Henry Martin Tanner. And I do find that, and I do find his name mentioned in other books. Uh, that are listed on Google. 
So there are quite a few books out here with the name of my uh, great-grandfather. Um, of course, you're going to say this is all kind of front-loaded if uh, my ancestors don't aren't as famous and I'm not going to find anything. Well, I would uh, I would submit to you that you'll probably be surprised at the amount of information that you find when you start doing searches like these. Now, let's suppose I was looking for this specific book, the book called Henry Martin Tanner Joseph City Arizona Pioneer. Well, the simplest way to do that is to copy the name of the book or part of the name of the book and then use that as the search term. Now, I, here I copied the name that I'd already found, but the point of doing that as a search term is that it now gives me other places on the internet where that book was mentioned or that phrase was used inside of a search uh, a search engine. Okay, and I'd like to mention that this particular uh, method of looking for information by taking larger blocks of, of uh, search terms is one way that uh, teachers, professors at, at uh, schools and universities uh, use to determine whether or not their students have done any plagiarism because if you've uh, simply if it's if the text that you're reading from the student looks a little bit questionable you can always plug in a section of it and see where they found it on the web so if they copied it then it would come right back up as something that was copied off the internet so what else can we do with this uh, with these different search terms well one thing that we do have so let's suppose that I'm trying to search in a foreign language and I want to know about German uh, vital records and I'm particularly looking for births. Well, if I do that search in English, I'm going to get a lot of English websites. So let's go back to the search tab here so we can see. I got about 45 million results, but they all start out in English. And let's assume that I'm looking for something in uh, in German. I would really do really would like to find out what the Germans have on on their records. Well, it's easy to do that. First of all, you need to copy your search terms. I'm going to use a command or Control C, copy, highlight, and copy the search terms. And then I'm going to go directly to Google Translate, which is a program from Google. Google Translate gives me the opportunity of translating those search terms from my English into uh, any number of other languages. In this case, I'm going to translate the search terms into German. And when I do that, I've got the German search terms now, which I can then highlight and go back to the search and use as the search terms instead of the English. And when I do that, of course, I get uh, a whole bunch of pages in, uh, in German. Now, how do I know if, for, let's say, for example, that I can't read German or couldn't read German? Um, and so I would like to find out which of these would be helpful to me. And uh, basically, in, in order to do that, all I really have to do is click on the link and the program will automatically, Google will automatically translate that from German into English. So any of those pages. Now you can see that one's not going to be a whole lot uh, of... Uh, help to me in finding ancestors. But now I can go back to the search terms and check out some of these other websites. Also I can see what's happened is they've automatically translated, now that I got started, they've automatic, uh, Google has automatically translated the entire search term list into, uh, into English, even though these sites are all in German. Doesn't look like that's going to be a good way to search. It looks to me like we might want to use the word genealogy and in addition to those to 
to give us some more specific searching capabilities. Well, that's a pretty good introduction as to how to do searches, and Google will probably return to this because there's some more details that we could go over in future quick views. But thank you for watching this quick view of genealogy, and uh, you consider uh, subscribing to my channel here in YouTube and uh, returning to see uh, some future quick views in genealogy. Thanks again.